welcome to your sparkly brand. We're here to inspire and empower female entrepreneurs like you. This podcast is all about making your marketing and branding sparkly. Each week we share valuable tips and tricks, discuss common mindset challenges, and interview inspiring female business owners. In a world that tries to pit women against each other, your sparkly brand is saying no to that BS. I'm Lauren Tassie and I'm here with my co-host Megan Gersh. Hey Lauren, how are you? I'm wonderful. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. Thanks for asking. Awesome. So how was, uh, how was your week? I had a very interesting, busy week. I kind of want to kick this off with my sparkly moment of the week. So I do a lot of marketing coaching and I had this client call where it was a bit of an emotional call with this client. And I just really feel like I helped that person that day. And as a coach, like that's like one of the best feelings in the world. The next day I, I woke up to an email from him just like saying, thank you. And like, you know, for providing like a safe space for that, that, that kind of like raw space to exist and like to be able to have that hard conversation that we kind of went through. So it just like meant a lot to me. And uh, so that's my sparkly moment of the week. I love that. Um, I think it's interesting too, because I, I find myself even on like strategy calls, like people like really open up um, and it's, it's, it's so special the way that people do that, even when it is like, oh, we're talking about marketing or whatever. Um, just that you realize that there's so much more behind it than just like, oh, we're trying to sell stuff. Like it's really people sharing their stories and their struggles and connecting with other people. Yeah, absolutely. That's one of my favorite things about coaching in general is that you really do get to know people on a personal level, like while you're chatting with them and about their specific business situations. And I just love it. Like it's, it's so rewarding. Awesome. Well, so my sparkly moment of the week, I think this was yours a few weeks ago, um, but I hired a VA, like a tech VA specifically to help me like get a new bookkeeping system set up and like all sorts of the stuff that I'm just like, now I'm just like, okay, I don't even want to learn how to do it. Like I used to be so much the person that would be like, all right, well, I can figure this out. I can figure out anything. Um, but now I'm just not going to do it. I'm just gonna have somebody else do it. And then I also added two more writers to my team, uh, which is exciting. So it just, it's like, I felt, I feel like I've been kind of under a crush of work the past month or so. And it's like, this week has finally opened up and I'm not quite as overwhelmed by things because the whole team building thing is helping me out. That is so awesome. I'm so happy for you. Thank you. Well, should we get into what we're talking about today? Absolutely. I'm excited about this week's episode. Awesome. So today we are talking about website homepages. This is like one of, I, you know, I don't want to say it's the most important because it really depends on like how your clients are finding you and all that, but it's one, it's absolutely one of the most important parts of your business's presence on the web. And I think the interesting thing is it has been since the internet has been in our lives, you know, social media comes and goes, email has its ups and downs, but like your website is like your castle on the internet. So that's why I'm excited to talk about it. And we're talking specifically about homepages. So it's just the first page you land on when you hit your website, you have less than a second to make an impression when somebody lands on your website. It's, it's this, like that, this gut reaction thing that happens. And we've talked about this a lot about like building trust and um, authority. And it's, it's one of those things that like is imperceivable kind of, but when it's wrong, you know, it's wrong. And that's why the homepage is so important because if something feels off or it, it doesn't match, people are just going to bounce. And not only does that mean you've like lost a lead, you've lost a customer, but it also, uh, it hurts your website's credibility in terms of search engines, in terms of, you know, referral links, that kind of thing. So just, you know, that's why it's so important. And it is usually one of the first customer touch points before a sale is made, before, you know, any sort of conversion happens they're going to land on your website. And the goal is always to get visitors to take action. Sometimes that's buying something. Sometimes that's getting an email address. Sometimes that's just reading a blog post. It's just when you go to set up your homepage, you really have to think about what action you want your visitor to take. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that that is a great point to kind of talk about. The very top of your website is known as the area that is above the fold. And this is a term that comes from the old newspaper days when they would literally fold a a newspaper in half and everything that was seen above the fold on the newspaper was considered to be the most important information that the newspaper wanted to get out there. So in your above the fold area, you definitely want to include your most important offer. This should include your headline, your call to action, and a striking image that really makes an impact on the customer. Again, this is the first chance that you have to make that impression with the customer before they even start scrolling on the page. So you want to make sure that it counts. And then taking a look at your navigation, 
information, you want to make sure that it's as simplified as possible. Usually I recommend using one or two words for each page in your navigation, but making sure that it's concise is going to allow the website visitor to find what they're looking for quickly. So let me ask you a question, because this is something I have never been like 100% crystal clear on myself. So I'm thinking people listening to this podcast might also have the same question. When it when we're talking about above the fold, does that literally just mean the area that is visible on your phone or your computer when you land on the page? Yes. Okay. So it couldn't possibly be something that's slightly further down. And in terms of if you're, you know, on mobile or you're on a computer, that's something to consider too, right? Absolutely. Yes. And it's, it's great that you mentioned that because over half of website use is conducted via mobile phone or tablet at this point. So so it's super, super important that you optimize your website for mobile. Okay, cool. Now I understand this thing. <laughs> so then the other thing that one of the other first elements that usually you get when you land on a website is a pop-up and sometimes they're like super helpful. Is there anything better than like, and actually this annoys me sometimes I'm like landing on a website, usually I'm shopping or something and there's a pop-up and I'm like, get out of the way pop-up. And then I'm like, wait a second. I wanted that pop-up because it's like a discount or free shipping or whatever. And I'm just like, oh, sometimes I'm so quick to like, you know, whack them all them down. But so using pop pop-ups in a way that actually achieves a goal, whether again, getting an email address, you know, some sort of bonus freebie kind of thing and having it at the right time, because you can set, you know, a pop-up to come immediately when you land on a web page, which is usually not the right decision. You can have it come 30 seconds after somebody has been on your website, after they scrolled a certain point on your page. So just sort of thinking about that and thinking about when this pop-up is going to be most helpful and most appealing to your visitor. And then you do want to make sure that like it's achieving a goal, right? We don't just want to be like, hi, welcome to our website. And then it's just like this annoying thing. And sometimes you see too many pop-ups, right? You see one that comes right when when you're uh, right when you land on the page. And then sometimes there's like another one that'll like slide up the bottom. And sometimes they're like competing offers, which I, I don't understand. And I definitely don't recommend focus on that one goal, uh, whether it's, you know, here's a special deal we have, or let me grab your email address and I'll send you this freebie, that kind of thing. Just focusing on that one goal with one well-timed pop-up. It's great that you mentioned that because I do a lot of website reviews in my business. And that is something that I see a lot of. I think it's just because a lot of business owners are just told like, you need to start an email list. You need to start a texting campaign. You need to offer all of these things. And they just go by that advice and they add all of these pop-ups to their website. And then they wind up hurting them in the long run because it's like, ah, like I'm just getting bombarded with messages like over and over as the consumer. So yeah, I think, and one thing I want to add is if you're adding a pop-up because you want to grow your email list, there needs to be something in it for the visitor. You know, a, when it's e-commerce, when, when it's products, it's so, you know, a discount, free shipping, that kind of thing. Easy. That's, you know, a great reason to do it. But when it's your service-based business, you're offering, you know, something a little different than that. How can you give them some incentive to join your email list? You know, a freebie, something, you know, I send out weekly emails with tips about, you know, Know, this thing, um, but just, Hey, join my email list usually isn't going to get you anywhere. Yeah. People need to be incentivized just because, I mean, if you take a look at anybody's inbox, right, it's always inundated with promotions. We're just getting on lists constantly. And so you really have to incentivize the customer to want to be on that email list. Like what can they get? Is it a discount code? Is it a freebie? Is it a template of some kind really helps to just think about what they might really want and then create that offer around that. Okay. So let's think a little bit about the rest of your homepage. Now you definitely want to think about your customer's perspective, like when they are browsing the homepage of your website, what information do they need to know? Like, what are they looking for on your website? Are they looking for products? Are they looking for the types of services that you offer? Whatever that is, you need to prioritize that content on the page. If you sell products, obviously make sure that those products have buy buttons attached to them so that customers can take action quickly. If you sell services, then make sure that your services are kind of laid out for the customer very easily to Browse. And think about like how you might be able to answer questions that your ideal customer might have as they browse your web page. Structure your content to answer those questions as they kind of make that journey through your website. In general, this is a big mistake that I see businesses make too, is that people will say like, oh, like I'm not making sales on my website. And then I go take a look at their website and there are no buy buttons or there's no way to take action on any of the offers. And so you definitely want to make sure that you are adding call to action buttons throughout your homepage and giving the customer that opportunity to take action on whatever it is you're offering. Yeah. I think that um, when it comes to the call to action buttons, sometimes we forget 
that like, we can't just assume people know what to do or where to go, or that they're going to take the effort to scroll back up because they're not. And it's just put those everywhere. I like, I don't want to say I've never seen a website with too many call to action or buy buttons because it definitely happens. But 95% of the time there are not enough. And when I'm looking at, you know, sort of a new business's website. Yeah, absolutely. And that kind of drives home the point that like customers love to be guided. And so when you take them kind of on that experience, like throughout your homepage, like you are telling them this is the most important thing, or this is how you take action. And so by using buttons and different kind of like visual cues on your website, you're guiding them through that experience. And that's really helpful as a customer. Yeah. And so let's move on and talk a little bit more about the copy on your homepage. So what a great homepage balances informative copy, images, branding, and all of that. But sometimes you have to give, you know, if you're selling a beautiful product, a ring, some jewelry, you probably don't need a ton of copy on your homepage. But if you have, you know, more of an info product, a service, that kind of thing, you're going to need to have some explanation right up front. And that's where we want to use headings, subheaders, and whatever you can do to break up walls of text. One thing I I really love to do is have um, basically a, a, a small heading, a little explanation, and three of those across. I think that really helps break up, you know, three points. Maybe these are three values, three services, core values or core components of your business. Have those sort of laid across horizontally in between images to, uh, you know, have the eye going the other direction and really enforce those beliefs. And I always say, if you have three or more paragraphs without a header, you're doing it wrong. Um, Just any sort of heading one, heading two, just right there to really break up that text. Um, And then if you are doing that, those are a great place to use SEO keywords in your headings. That's what signifies to Google that your page is, you know, valuable for those keywords. You want to use them, you know, use keywords sparingly. Google doesn't reward keyword stuffing anymore, but if you're putting a header on your homepage, definitely make sure one of your keywords is in there somewhere. And also we want to talk about how to brand your website. So obviously you want to make sure that you're using the same colors, like the exact color codes and fonts throughout your website. If you have a brand style guide, this is a great time to refer back to the exact Uh, styles that you should be using throughout your branding. Make sure that your images and your video are in line with your overall vibe of the branding that you want to get across. And if somebody is coming from one of your social media channels and they're landing on your website, it should feel like the same experience. They should know based on the colors, the fonts, the general look of the website that they're in the right place. So you want to give them those visual cues. And then another great way to build trust is to incorporate social proof on your homepage. Um, I think sometimes people put them on, put, you know, reviews on another page or they're, you know, they have a press page, but really that should be front and center because that builds trust. So that can look like reviews or testimonials. Um, and maybe it's, you know, some of your best reviews when it's, when it's a product or something, but when it comes to uh, a testimonial for your service, I really love to see not just like the words as a quote, but somebody's full name, their job title and a picture of them. If you can, um, videos are great too. I would, you know, caution, about using a video if that's not a place you want somebody to get stuck for a few minutes, but definitely like make them as real a person as possible because that builds trust. It's a great place to put client logos. You know, if you've worked for Coca-Cola, that should absolutely be on your website. And then the same goes with press. You know, if you've been on a great podcast, if you've been featured in Forbes or, you know, wherever, just having sort of a section for that, just, it just builds this like imperceivable level of like, this person knows what they're talking about. I trust them. Yeah. I think it's really great that you brought up the photos of people as an element to add to the page, just because any opportunity that you can take to try to humanize your brand, like showing that there is a person working with another person that's going to help to build that trust. So thank you so much for mentioning that because that's, that's a huge component of building that trust on the page. So now that we're at the end of the homepage, let's talk about the footer. So what goes in your footer? You definitely want to include your contact information, Uh, any social media icons that you want associated with your website, perhaps also another iteration of your email sign up. This is also where any legal information um, or terms of service should go. All right. Well, we have scrolled to the bottom of the homepage and also this episode, I suggest go take a look at your homepage right now um, and make sure you're not missing any of these key elements. See if there's anything that can be approved. Can you add some more photos? Can you, you know, is there a great place for another review? Just really, you know, take, take into account these uh, suggestions we've given you and see how you can improve your page and make sure that you're subscribed to our podcast. So hit that follow button and you will never miss an episode. Thank you so much for listening. And until next time, stay sparkly.